In this video, we're going to be talking about the paint tab inside of the brush creator. So let's start here with mixing. We're going to go ahead and minimize these. And we have a couple different modes here. Now these modes are not available in every single tool type. So you notice we're in pencil right now. If we shift over to watercolors, you'll see all three of these are available. Same thing with acrylics. Now we're going to start with acrylics here. And what I want to point out first is these settings right here. If you modify it, this little X will turn from gray to an active gray or a lighter gray. When you click it, it's going to go back to the default state. Now this default state, edit, preferences, right here in tools, you have an option of open curve editors. Now we're in oils and acrylics, which means that right here, oils and acrylics, these three are going to be the three icons that we see inside of the brush creator. Now we have this set to paint and mix. So we look over here, paint and mix is the top option. Notice that this is mirrored here. If we change this, let's say we bring the paint option up and the mix option over. When we click OK, over here, OK, you'll notice that this one has replicated the default state satin preferences. If you've changed something and you don't like the results, you can use this to go back. Now notice this little reset curves X has gone from an inactive gray to an active lighter gray. We'll click on it and that'll reset it back. Again, when we close here and here, that's going to reset this back to the default. So happy that they did this because you can play around comfortably and not worry about screwing anything up permanently. All right, so let's look at how to understand these different curves. Okay, this first one is not for paint because paint doesn't have any extra options. It just paints using the settings here in shape and grain and stroke. Now you'll notice here paint and mix. This curve editor is selected. If we switch over here, it turns it off. If we have this open and we switch to one of the other modes, you're going to notice it's going to jump to that mode here in the curve editor. So let's look first here at the blend one. So we're going to remove all these different nodes. So we have just one node and look at what this looks like. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of paint down first. We've got, we've got some nice impasto depth there. And we're going to look here at the blend curve. Now when this is very low, we drag through. You can see this is blending. It's not pushing the paint very far. If we bring this up, we do the same thing. You can see right here, it's pulled the paint a little bit further. If we bring this up higher, you can see it's going to really pull the paint. You can actually just push the paint around on the canvas when it's set high like this. Now, the reason we have no other nodes here is because we don't want pressure to affect the type of action that we're getting. So with very light pressure, you can see that we can pull this paint around. With heavy pressure, there's no different function. So if we add a second node and bring it down and this up to the corner, this means with low pressure, we're gonna get that first result, that little bit of blending. With medium pressure, we're gonna get medium blending. And with heavy pressure, we're really gonna be pushing that paint around the canvas. Now, if you adjust this up by adding a node here in the middle, and what that means is this is going to very quickly go from light pressure to heavier pressure. And here, this will be more gradual. So we have to push a little harder to start getting that really to pull. So we set that back to its default and look at paint and blend. It has two modes. The mode is shown by the lighter blue. So let's go ahead, we're going to take this and we're going to remove it down. So there's just one node on blend and we're going to focus just on paint. So let's go right here with this low. Again, we've taken out pressure, so pressure is not affecting how this looks. Bring this up a little bit. You can see that we've got more paint, a little more impasto. Again, thicker paint, a little more impasto. Up here with no additional pressure, this is what we're seeing. So we bring a second node into play. 
Let's scoot over on the canvas and look at this again. Here with light pressure, medium pressure, and heavy pressure, you can see how this is being affected by this curve. Now if we introduce blend, and we take paint out of the equation, so it's just at blend, let's do the same thing on this line. Let's make a thick line right here and then go back over here to paint and blend and look at this. Okay, with very light settings here, low settings, let's make a medium settings. We have not adjusted the pressure whatsoever. This is still light pressure. You can see the differences here and how much paint is being pulled, how much blending is happening. Now to combine these two, we've reset this back to its default. Paint here, if we want paint to happen after blending, this means that light pressure is going to blend first, and then a little bit more pressure, we're going to start adding paint. Let's use a different color so we can see this. Light pressure, we're blending. When we get to this medium level pressure right here, medium level pressure, we start to add paint. If we want that to happen sooner, right here, we're going to start by painting because this is happening before this. So we're doing some painting and blending is happening at the same time. You can see that with this purple color coming through. Let's add a yellow. You can see the colors are blending because we have some blending going on. If you want to make sure that you have the option of blending before painting, then make sure that when you have blend selected, you have this happening before it happens in the pressure scale over here. So here, let's go ahead and make this really high. So immediately we're blending with a heavy blend effect. And then with a little bit more pressure, we start to paint. This way you can push the paint around and then with a little bit more pressure, you can start painting. So feel free and feel comfortable playing around with these as much as you'd like. And just remember that you can always reset these back to the, to the program defaults and then set the program defaults back to the factory settings. For rendering, you're gonna to need to be in a specific mode type. So this works for watercolor. So we're gonna demonstrate it here. So let's go ahead and put some color on the screen again. Let's look at these paint blending modes. Now let's look at glaze set on default. Darken. Lighten. Overlay. Difference. Subtract. Let's look at exclusion. these paint blending modes will give you a lot of flexibility in making these look the way you want. This is where you create brushes that lighten and darken. So if you wanted to add a shadow without covering the underlying detail, you could use glaze, multiply, and bring the opacity down, go over the top. And you're gonna see it's gonna provide a really nice shadow without covering over the detail underneath. This is really nice. Doing something similar with screen inside of glaze or normal can provide a nice lightening effect. So you're able to brighten areas that might be getting a little bit more light. For oils and acrylics and pasta, make sure that you have the oils and acrylics tool selected. Let's go ahead and put down some nice thick impasto. Now, if we turn this down to zero, you'll notice that we don't have any thickness here. Bring this up to 100. We've got a medium level of thickness and 200 is going to be thicker still. Now impasto smudge, this is easy to see here. If we bring this all the way down, you're gonna get kind of a gritty, let's zoom in a little bit more, kind of a gritty looking brush stroke. We bring this to the middle, it's a little smoother and all the way up to 200, it's nice and buttery. So you can see here the difference between these ones. Lots 
of texture here. The texture is being smooth and smooth further. Let's look at canvas texture influence. Now over here, we're painting and we have opacity turned off, but it looks like something is happening here that looks like opacity. This is not opacity, and I wanna talk about what this is real quickly. So we're in paint and blend mode. This is blending from nothing into something. So what it's doing is actually not adjusting the opacity, but adjusting the amount of paint on the canvas from nothing to something. So over here, if you want to change that, choose paint. Then when you go, you're gonna see this immediately. There's not a blending action going on in the background that might be confusing kind of what you're seeing right here. So with that said, let's look at canvas texture influence right here. When this is set at zero, the canvas is going to have no effect. And let's change this canvas. Let's get something nice and dimply. Bring this up to 100%. I recommend putting the canvas texture lower for a finer grain paper uh, if you're doing pencil work or something where you want to have a lot of detail. So looking at this, it was very hard to see this canvas texture. So we're going to look at one more place here. So in visual settings, there's an option for canvas visibility. Make sure that this texture influence is set somewhere in the middle. This will help you see what's going on, see how the canvas is influencing your brush strokes. So we paint right here. We see no effect from the canvas. Let's bring this up to 50%. We're going to be painting and adding pressure here. If we click here, you can see that this is set to less influence. That means it fills in the little low areas of the canvas. And here, this is, is doing a heavy influence. So we're getting this on the top of the canvas look. Just light and heavy. And all the way up. You also have a curve editor right here. This curve editor by default is set just like this. With paper texture strength set at 50% and paper texture contrast set here at one, we're going to make this simpler by turning this to light texture. This is filling in the mountain peaks and this is filling in the valleys first. This is natural. This is not how this typically works, especially not with oils and acrylics. So here, if we flip this to dark texture and do the same thing again, you're gonna see right here, this is a little bit more like what we're used to. It fills the high areas first and the low areas second. Right here, auto should make that look the way that it would normally look based off the tool that you're using. Keeping this at auto, let's look at what this looks like. Set at one with light pressure, light pressure, light pressure. So you can see the paper texture contrast slider in action. If you have questions about the paint tab and the brush creator, put it in the comments section. In the next video, we're going to create a couple different types of brushes using the brush creator. So stay tuned, stay creative, and have a wonderful day.